We're going to learn a very important concept today known as the distributive property. You might remember learning the order of operations a long time ago. The order of operations is more commonly known as PEMDAS, where the P stands for parentheses, the E stands for exponents, then multiplication and division, and lastly, addition and subtraction. Of course, this order that we see is the exact order that we should take when we see multiple different operators. Some things take precedence over other things. And it's this right here that helps us to remember what should be performed first. Now some of us might have already learned this same concept with a different acronym. Instead of PEMDAS, some of us might have learned it as PEDMAS or BEDMAS. Of course, in this situation, we would know the B represents brackets, which is essentially the same thing as parentheses. Okay, so when we're using the order of operations, and we see a question like this, four times bracket two plus three, we know right away that we need to do whatever is inside the brackets first. Of course, two plus three is simply five, and then we would drop the brackets and we would get four times five which equals 20. And I can imagine that whatever we just did right over here is probably very easy for you to understand. You probably know this from a long time ago. Well, in that case, how would we do something like this? It's a very similar situation, but instead of having a three, we now have an X. We want to do what's inside the brackets, but there isn't much that we can do. 2 plus x cannot be further simplified. Well, this is a perfect time for us to use the distributive property. So before we talk more about it, I'm just going to use the distributive property right now, and you'll probably be able to pick up on the pattern of what's actually going on. So what we can do is 4 times 2 plus 4 times x. What we end up with is 8 plus 4x. So what do we do here? There was a number being multiplied by a bunch of terms inside this bracket. Granted, these terms were very simple, but we still have two terms. And in this situation, what we did was we multiplied this number and we distributed this multiplication to each of the terms. So if we put this in general terms, when you have a situation like this, where it's a multiplied by bracket b plus c. And notice how we have inside the brackets an operation going on where it's b plus c. Then what we can do is we can multiply a with b plus a with c. And of course, you may be wondering why the distributive property is so interesting. But so far, we've literally followed the order of operations. We always did what's in the brackets first, then came the exponents, and etc, etc. What the distributive property guarantees us is that so long as we distribute that multiplication that we're supposed to do to each term, then we're going to end up with the exact same answer, the exact same final value as we would have if we did simplify the brackets first. So if that's true, let's actually put that to the test. What was our first example? Well, let's bring that back up. It was four times bracket two plus three. Now, since we can simplify what's in the brackets, we decided to just use the normal order of operations and we probably should do this. Uh, we ended up getting four times five, which was 20. And again, if we're trying to simplify, this is the perfect way to approach this situation. But just for a thought experiment, let's try using the distributive property. After all, this right here is in the exact same form of a multiplied by b plus c. So if the distributive property is actually doing its job by guaranteeing us the final value, we should be able to use this and get the same value. So let's actually try it out. Instead of doing two plus three the way we did over here, why don't we try doing four multiplied by two plus four multiplied by three? And again, 
This is the same format as what we did for a multiplied by b plus c. What we got was ab plus ac. And in this situation, we got 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3. We end up with 8 plus 12, which is 20. Awesome. So it seems like the distributive property is doing its job. So let's try a few examples so that we can get a little bit more comfortable with the distributive property. So in this example, we can use the distributive property. As you can see, we're multiplying Q with these two terms that are bracketed and there's an operation. So we would have Q multiplied by 3B squared minus Q multiplied by 7Q. And of course, all we have to do is simplify the following and we would get our final answer. So notice here that this time we had a subtraction as opposed to the addition that we had in our previous example. Of course, it doesn't matter if there's an addition or subtraction so long as you take that into consideration. All right, now in this example, we have three terms in the brackets. That actually doesn't change too much. Uh, what's interesting, however, is that on the outside, we have 5p being multiplied. We know that 5p is the same as 5 times p. So how would we distribute this? Well, one thing for sure is that we can distribute this, and we should just do exactly what our intuition tells us to do. So 5p multiplied by 3g would be 15pg minus 5p multiplied by z, which would be 5pz, plus 5p multiplied by 2, which would be 10p. So this is really easy stuff. If you just take it one step at a time, and you make sure that you are allowed to use it, it's a correct situation to use it, then everything else after that becomes fairly simple. It's just a matter of multiplication, really. Great, so let's try another example. So in this example, we seem to have a negative number on the outside being multiplied with whatever's inside the brackets. Well, this isn't that much more difficult as well. All we have to do is just distribute it. So we have negative 2f multiplied by 7a. Of course, that would simplify to negative 14af. And then we have negative 2f multiplied by negative 2, which is going to be plus 4f. So that would be our final answer after we simplify using the distributive property. So with this being said, let's review a couple of common mistakes that students tend to make. The first one is using the distributive property when you shouldn't be using it. So a good example of this would be 6 times 5pqr. We have seen students try to distribute this 6 to the 5, the p, the q, the r. The reason why you can't do this is that 5pqr is one term. Remember, the 6 is being multiplied to each term. And since we have one term, this in effect is no different from just multiplying 6 times 5 times p times q times r. So that should be simplifying to 30 pqr. Not 30 plus 6p plus 6q plus 6r. Besides, where did these plus signs even come from anyways if we do that? So just keep in mind that the multiplication of 6 is something that we want to distribute to each term. We need to be able to identify the terms properly, which means that if you have difficulty with that process, then you should spend some extra time with our previous video on terms and collecting like terms. That will help you to identify what is a term and how to see how many terms are in a polynomial. Great, so the last mistake that students tend to make is with the negative signs and the positive signs. As long as you're taking your time to account for the negative signs, the positive signs, and correct multiplication, then you will get everything right in the end. So in this situation, we have negative 5t multiplied by 
2 over t plus t. Well, notice here that we have a negative number here and two positive numbers there. So what we have is negative 5t multiplied by 2 over t minus 5t multiplied by t. If we simplify this, we get negative 10t over t minus 5t squared. And of course, negative 10t over t can be further simplified down to just negative 10. So this over here would end up becoming our final answer. And notice that we didn't forget about the negative sign and we did everything properly. So again, as long as you're using the distributive property when it is appropriate to do so, and as long as you're taking things slowly and multiplying things correctly, you'll be able to get the right answer without too much hassle. Awesome. So that closes out our video. And thanks for watching our lesson on the distributive property.